Come here, Arch. Come on, you have to meet Byron and Dexter. Oh, look at Arch. I want to see hey. Hugo. Oh, oh come on. Hugo. Oh, oh. he's a beauty. Come he's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hi, Hugo. Hi, Hugo. This episode of Behind the Design is brought to you by the Volvo XC90. The evolution of the luxury SUV. Hi. Hey, we made it happen. You Thank did. You. Hey, Hi, Linda. Byron. Byron's on the top. I'm on, on my screen, screen you have black okay. and white behind you, right? Yeah, yeah, you got and it. Dexter, you have green behind you. I sure do. I sure do. How so are good you to both? See you. We're great. So you're both in def different apartments right now, condos. Yeah. Yes. But you Condit. both live at Habitat, right? Yeah. The famous yeah. building. Mm -hmm. From famous building. I saw it at Expo '67, like everybody yeah. my age. <laughs> and um, it's funny. We wish. It's now. Be it's one of the most fashionable luxury addresses in Montreal. Definitely. And it wasn't built that way. It was built for affordable housing, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I understand you have great views and lots of light. And if somebody would move their camera just a little bit and show just, me, like okay, Dexter, just a little bit. Dexter, Dexter, I can see come the on. staircase gonna, in the yeah, background. Yeah, 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 the staircase in the back. Well, I'm going to start with the. Well, let's do that then. There's the view. There's the city. So, so this is my um, solarium slash workspace that we that we, I'll say, adopted from our children because it used to be the game and playroom and Play-Doh and slime room. But um, once we started working from home, uh, my wife and I had to sort of like choose two ends of the house. And so I've taken over the solarium. But to that point, um, Linda, and going right back to, you know, Moshi Safdi and talking about design and just sort of bringing that into it. Imagine that a 23-year-old, you know, Montreal student could, um, you sort of profess that people needed indoor space and outdoor space. And that should be something that is for everyone, like a super democratic view on how we should look at design. You know, we, they, in the 1960s, people were having these concepts about prefab housing and how we were all gonna live in a world where there was gonna be a tremendous population in urban and city centers. And they were trying to solve the problems. And these are the same problems that we're trying to solve today. Yeah. Did you have to renovate your space, Dexter? Yeah, so we decided very early on, and it would be my recommend, recommendation probably for anyone, there's a healthy respect that you have, you owe the space to sort of live in the space first and to understand the space. And then afterwards, when we started making improvements and additions, it was always with a healthy respect for the biz, for the building itself. And actually a lot of the design that Moshi Safdie had done. So we try to keep the moldings at the same height as the original moldings, all the lights shot up as opposed to having sort of this, um, this lighting shooting down from the ceiling. So we tried to have that sort of secondary light run through the space as well too. So we tried to sort of look and we have these little punch lights that are from the sixties and we kept an old bathroom as well. What about yeah. you, Byron? Can you move your camera just a little yes, bit while you're telling I me the story? Yes, of course I can. Yeah, yeah, well, I know you that you've yeah. got that feature wall of art. Yeah, okay. oh, so, uh, I saw that Yves Saint Laurent. That is a yeah. great portrait. I love it. So that, yeah, Photography. Andre, Andre Monet, who's an yeah. amazing, amazing, amazing artist. Yeah. And um, good styling, Byron. But I have to, I have to share this because we're on the top Ooh. floor. That's that's our view out on the Saint Lawrence. And, uh, and we literally look at that from our sofa. Wow. And, oh, uh, and then we great. have windows out to the back. So yeah, it's a very, very special opportunity to live here. And, uh, and, and we made it home and it's, so it's, it's been exciting to be again, 200 meters away from, from my twin brother. And, and we just, we're literally minutes away. His kids come over, bring the door, bring the door bell. <laughs> like we're coming to visit uncle. The last time I saw you both was in January at yeah. IDS. And I remember you were so good on stage telling your story. Oh. And I know that today's about your homes and how you're living, but I still want our viewers to hear a little bit about your story in case they're, they don't know. I know you first and foremost as the guys responsible for my favorite bag in the whole world. This is it. Oh yeah. I yeah. love this bag. Yeah. Want. Yeah. I actually bought it from Michelle and then I stole it from him. It's so great. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, we not. It's called. It was called the Heathrow, and we wanted to make a bag that was impossibly slim, and as oh. you said, that was for the artist, the architect, the designer, wow. the editor. That's probably what a decade ago, Linda, and it's still that performing was want. well. Yeah. And then in 2017, you sold Want, mm -hmm. and then two years later, you launched Goody. You got it. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. And I was on your site. Wow, it's really grown. You have wonderful products. We're very excited. It was a labor of love from the very beginning. And it's funny when you start with something that's a kernel of an idea with just a lot of intention and a lot of passion. And we're not young, Linda. I mean, we started Want at 45 oh. <laughs> after having a business. Not young. I could be uh, your mom. So I goody, goody. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we started it with a lot of heart and a lot of passion. And we're really excited about, about what we've done in just the last 18 months. So it's really fun. What's been really reassuring for us is that I think we knew intuitively that we really wanted to start having this conversation about the home and the comfort of home and why the things that surround you matter. But what has happened is, and, and I think the reality of our business today is that we're seeing that the customer is really resonating with what we're talking about, the products that we're showing, the discipline that we have in terms of sourcing makers and products that have meaning, that, that, um, that have strong intention and that are doing really great things in the world. So yeah, it's, it's been exciting. To Barnes' point, you can never know what's about to come, but you can always have a feeling of where you want to be. And for us, we wanted to build a company that spoke to those values of things that you were going to cherish, things that would surround you, things that would be this rituals and the souvenirs of your life. And these are going to be the things that are most important. And then when you knock off of that, those are also the things that you're not going to throw away. You're not going to expect on discount. You're not going to just buy it for the sake of buying it. You're really going to think about it. And that was what we wanted to do is to say, sustainability matters, but what does that look like? What does it feel like? And how is it going to be an important in your life? It's like we somehow or another in the last 20, 30 years got into this pace um, that we had to replace things often with things were obsolete. We were buying things to Dexter's point because of convenience or price. And we're trying to reframe the conversation that these items, these souvenirs, you were on that trip 20 years ago, you know exactly the story that the person that you bought that from or the market where you discovered it and you bring that home and it becomes part of the fabric of your life. And we're trying to get people to move back to something that, that is, is fairly authentic. How is that playing a role in your life and how does it add value back mm -hmm. to you, which is important. I know our viewers want to see a little more, just a yeah. little more. Dexter, can I see a little more? Yeah, okay, get, let's get do up, it. We gotta get him out of there. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm in the solarium, everybody. He's and better I at this than me. The solarium. I don't know. Great. I don't know. No, yeah, and no, so we Byron. I saw a lot. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, so, a kitchen. So, I see a kitchen. Kitchen. I want to see yeah. the kitchen. Yeah. So I'm this into is. Kitchens. Okay, so this is a ground floor. So when we talked about a renovation, a few years later we did everything, and we wanted it. Um, I adore. American walnut. So there's a lot of it throughout the house and it's something that we've really, uh, we fall in love with. And then we yeah. built up this whole sort of front unit by the front door over here to really break the space between the kitchen and the entrance. But then that space also doubles as our wine cooler and bar. And then there's a shelving unit for the coffee. And then on the other side, it's the vestibule. And then afterwards you sort of come into the kitchen. What's really nice is that we're on the island that you just saw. And then yeah. afterwards, this is now homework. I think to Barnes point, that yeah. multiplicity of yeah. use where the dining room is also the homework, like at seven o'clock yeah. tonight, we're doing math and geography and everything else over there. And then afterwards, without me tripping on my stairs, then we come up the stairs. These are all the original stairs that are over here are coming up. Okay, the stairs are original. They're great. Ooh, your bookcase well, is beautiful. I'm gonna, uh, Linda. I'm, I'm going to because I and I, I, I'm only doing this because his kitchen look is so modern and and so was ours in our previous place. But I, I'm going to show the viewers if I. I'm oh, good. To, I'm going to do the backwards walk that Dexter did, which seemed to work well. Um, that but was perfect. This is an original kitchen from Habitat 67. So wow. Because, yeah. So the original kitchens were done like this. It's, uh, I'm trying to see if, and it's, um, fantastic. it's totally retro and, uh, totally great. And, yeah. And then we, and I it's love that sink. My mother had that sink. Yeah, it's your perfect. Mom had, <laughs> your oh, mom had, so it's like, it's, Oh, look at that sink. Like, yeah. Look at that faucet. She had that faucet too. Yeah. So we have it done, which was cool because even here we did not renovate as I said, we came here and kept it as a rental, but we did something so simple as we loved the two tone cabinetry. And then we always use fire and ball paint for all of our projects. And we just took a paint and did a border trim around it just to make the room feel a little bit warmer in a kitchen, but a completely different kind that's of respect. A cool kitchen. And yeah, that's a pretty cool. I think it's a pretty that's, cool. kitchen. We're talking in our trends issue a year later, cause you were in our trends issue last year. Remember? Yeah. Yes. You were in this. And everything you talked about is totally relevant. 
And That's you're amazing. just gonna feel like you really were at, on the front of the conversation. So think. here we are a year later, and everybody wants to know how this experience has changed the way we view our homes and how, what it's gonna mean for the design of our homes going forward. Do you think we're viewing our homes differently besides just appreciating them more? Um, um, I, there's, there's so many things I'm going to, I'm putting up my little trend board for you here, Lindo. One of the things that I'm, I'm quite convinced about, uh, cause I feel it myself is that our need to travel is going to change, but our curiosity won't change. We're going to find more need and confidence in having to tell and share our true values. And what better way to do that than with the choices that you make? There's something about being home. I have time. Yeah. You know, I can yeah. dwell, I can design, I can focus in a way that I couldn't when I was always rushing off somewhere. Do you find yeah. that? I mean, I'd say the other trend that I would go to is that time is probably one of the new luxuries. And, yeah. and so when we think it about is the, time, it is, yeah. it is yeah. the new luxury. And so I think that's a really important element. And, and we have a healthy respect for people's time. And I think in all three of our roles as editors, that's exactly what we're doing, right? We understand and respect that people don't have time to look through um, you know, some of these marketplaces that have 10,000 choices. Heavily created, edited sites uh, have huge fans. We want to know that we're buying something that we're, no one's been hurt or taken advantage of to make yeah. it. Yeah. And we want it edited. Yeah. OK, Byron, what, about, what are your big t top trends? <laughs> Big top trends, uh, purchasing or bringing things into your home that are either modular or convertible or could adapt in terms of their use, that stool that works perfectly in, mm -hmm. a, in a bathroom as mm -hmm. it does in a living area or as it does as a, as a, a kitchen decorate, being already prepared for that, that in, in terms of, of the flexibility of space is going to be critical. We kind of take space for granted and I, and I think a big trend will be people will be much more conscious of what that things are in their right place and that they're working functionally for them for them and for and for the environment as well too. so it's more so, considered more considered more flexible i would say mm -hmm. that dining flexible. table has to be the dining table has yeah. to work as an office table they they like well that, designers all of it, yeah. understand that yeah. because designers love to move furniture yeah. do you love to move furniture i do it all I the time i do it all furniture. the time <laughs> Any more predictions? The predictions are what everybody wants right now. I want to hear from One you, Linda. I want, I want, I want you to, I, yeah. yeah, your prediction. Okay. Now, my theory about why plants are so big is because we're home to take care of them. Yeah. Like nobody wants plants when they're dead, when they come home, <laughs> right? But we're around. Oh well, yeah, way more gardening. All the things, all, all the, the DIY crafts, all the yeah. things that we associate with being homebodies. You know what? It's all back in it's droves. Nice. Drove. Isn't it great that we have time to 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 explore and discover all of these things oh, that, that, yes. that we can do and that matter to us? I, I, it's um it's in some ways a gift, as well too. We you know there was always this confluence between these concepts of being home, and being away, and then we we went away to escape home, but now we have to do a lot of away at home and you know whether it's in the kitchen with all the tools that we're using and you know cooking for the family or cooking for our friends um that's really exciting or nurturing your plants and, mm -hmm. and really taking care of them and mm -hmm. watching them grow you know when mm -hmm. everything is is really you know hard and challenging out in the world i think yeah these are definitely more basic human um responses yeah. to the times that we're in right now and so yeah, yeah for um, sure yeah. and outdoor spaces of course are, have 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 has have new importance can't try to buy yeah. a space heater try to buy an outdoor heater like those yeah. they're sold out there's so much going okay, on so in home I, I, and i'm and i'm and i'm gonna have to do what i wouldn't otherwise do but that is my my not so pretty little deep freezer in show the house me. that was not his, his, his <laughs> deep, he wants to show his deep freezer that he put that he just bought that i had to put that i that took me four months to get but in great. the middle of a pandemic great, it's great, about the great. only <laughs> that's great linda this has been a great visit great best to your families Thanks, Linda. Bye. Be safe. Uh, see, you, uh, see you after this on the other side. Yes. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Bye. 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 This episode of Behind the Design is brought to you by the Volvo XC90, the evolution of the luxury SUV.